The European Union's foreign policy chief, Joseph, uh, Joseph Borrell, is denying comments he made last week were racist. Borrell called Europe, quote, a garden and most of the world a jungle that could invade the garden. OK, this is what he actually said. Europe is a garden. We have built a garden. Everything works. It's the best combination of uh, political freedom, economic prosperity, and social cohesion that the humankind has been able to build. There's three things together. The, the rest of the world, and you know very well, Federica, is not exactly a garden. <laughs> the rest of the world, most of the rest of the world, is a jungle. And the jungle could invade the garden. And the gardeners should take care of it, should take care of the garden, but they will not protect the garden by, by walls, by building walls. <laughs> A nice small garden surrounded by high walls in order to prevent the jungle coming in is not going to be a solution because the, the jungle has a strong growth capacity and the walls will never be high enough in order to protect the garden. The gardeners have to go to the jungle. Europeans have to be much more engaged with the rest of the world. Otherwise, the rest of the world will invade us. He came under intense criticism and issued this apology. The growth of this lawless world in disorder is what I meant when talking about the jungle. My reference to jungle has no racist, cultural, or geographical connotation. Indeed, and unfortunately, the jungle is everywhere, including in Ukraine. We must take this trend seriously, and that was my message to the students. Now, what's been happening in Italy, they've elected uh, a fascist uh, government there. You look at what's happening, uh, the rise of the far right uh, in France and other European countries. A lot of that is being fueled by their hatred of immigration. Now, I told y'all repeatedly that one of the issues that you're seeing is that the birth rates of, frankly, whites in Italy and Germany and France and other European countries has been dropping. Well, what happens for your society to continue? You need people. There is a resistance and a anger to immigrants who are coming into those countries. This has been happening for the last 10, 15 years. And what you're seeing happen in Europe, you're now seeing happen in the United States. My next guest is Rula Jabril, an award-winning journalist and visiting professor. Uh, she joins us now from New York. Rula, always glad to have you. I mean, you've been, you know, I, I get your tweets. You, see, you hit me with the DMs and I see them. And you've been breaking this thing down. And too many people uh, have been ignoring the language and ignoring what's happening here. And what you have is you have individuals who literally on the right are yelling, oh, they're stealing our culture. They're taking our way of life. They're snatching our country back. You can literally look at Make America Great Again and the rhetoric of the right in America today and compare it to what you're hearing from the right in Europe, and it's the same. Absolutely. It's a global movement. And going back to Borrell and, and, and uh, his, his terrible, sickening comments, which are racist, and let's be clear, they are racist. He doesn't even understand that they are racist. He wrote them down. They posted them on their website. It was part of his speech. He's not realizing he's using the same rhetoric that's been used in the past against anybody that is different in Europe. He doesn't mention that Europe had two wars, two World War II, and they cracked down on their minorities. They oppressed them. They burned them alive. They put them in gas, gas chambers. And they use the language that is being used today against black people and against refugees and against immigrants and against minorities. And he's not even realizing that. When he talks about uh, a paradise or, or the rest of the world is a jungle and he's talking about the garden, eight years ago, that garden, Bert Mussolini gave us Hitler, gave us a destruction that, that and millions of people who had to die so he can build a prosperous Europe. People who are not only Europeans, Americans, and others. He, he, forgetting his own history, today we have a fascist movement around Europe, especially in Italy. They just won the elections. And you know, the prime minister, the elect prime minister, Giorgia Meloni, the first thing she used is the conspiracy theory of the replacement, the great replacement theory, 
the first thing she said about President Obama, and it is echoing Donald Trump when she said he's the worst president in history. How dare he impose sanctions on Russia? That was 2016 when it was obvious that Russia interfered in America's elections. She keeps continue saying that there's an invasion. She called people of color, she and her coalitions, all kind of names. She keep insisting that we need to protect Christianity in Europe, in Italy, because those are their people. I mean, you ha they had just elected the president of the parliament, Fontana, who called people, different people or people of color, others, animals. They call people like me who appear on Italian television, beasts, murderers. This is Berlusconi on newspaper, not a far right. This is Berlusconi on newspaper. So the issue of race, the issue of criminalization of entire group of people is at the center of their identity politics. And they use fear, hate, paranoia to basically push the idea that people like us, like you and me, and even people like President Obama, anybody that is different is a threat, an existential threat that needs to be eradicated. And that is the essence of his speech. And when you look at, uh, go to my iPad, uh, you look at uh, Michael Flynn, who was national security advisor for Trump, my, how Michael Flynn goes local to spread Christian nationalism. And when you, when you listen to the rhetoric, what you're seeing in America right now, Ruler, you are seeing uh, white folks who are, who are angry about the browning of America, who are, it's, it's driven by white fears, which is, which is why I wrote my book, and what's happening is it's, it's driving the politics and see, and I'm even having to deal with black folks who are like, oh, Roland, you're supporting illegal immigration. No, I understand the reality of history. The fact of the matter is this. If anyone with the brain looks at the United States of America, and if you look at how in more than 12 states, the average white death rate is higher than the average white birth rate. You have to have people in the future in order for you to continue having a country. I've explained this before. In China, 30 years ago, they imposed a one child per family Policy. rule. What, what's happening today? China's going, oh shit, what did we do? Why? Because the population is aging out they have fewer people who to replace them because they limited the number of children being born. And now they're having labor shortages in their manufacturing facilities because they don't have the people to replace the folks who are passing away. Folks, you don't have a why do why are small towns in America dying? OK, companies are leaving. <laughs> Young people leave those places. So it's largely older white people in these middle of the country, middle of the country uh, 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 towns uh, and states. Th this, is a, th this is what happens with demographic shifts. And so we have to understand when the politicians are pushing those buttons of fear and folks are responding, it's leading to them voting out of fear and voting based upon racism and bigotry. It's happening in Europe and we're seeing it in the United States. So, yes, I mean, the most powerful tool in politics has always been fear. You give the people enough fear, you're willing to take away their rights and their democracy because the existential, in moments of deep fear for any nation, people are willing to relinquish anything to the government so the government can enact some measures to protect them. That is their goal number, number one. But if you use that fear against minorities, against people who are different, and I, Roland, just to be clear, uh, it's not only immigration. The first time we start hearing this critical race theory uh, and basically the conspiracy theories is when black folks like us became visible, became part of the, became part of the media and we became, we start using our voices. There you go. We start electing black folks. I mean, the whole uh, white nation and, and Sarah Palin and, and, and the threat that Obama somehow was a Muslim, was different, was not American. The birther movement, it's happening in Italy all over the world. I mean, it's not a coincidence. The first uh, journalist to be threatened by this uh, new prime minister of Italy was myself. 
she actually threatened to sue me publicly over uh, the fact that I point out to the fact that she's criminalizing all immigrants. I point out to her statement and I point out to the fact that her father was himself a criminal. He was a truck trafficker. Uh, this is a confirmed news that came out in, a, in the Spanish newspaper. And she's like, oh, my father, I never met my father. Well, guess what? It's not about her father. It's about that fact that she points out to few immigrants' crimes to criminalize all of them by saying they're all criminals, they're all murderers, they're all rapists, or they're all bringing crimes, and just build a wall of fear and paranoia. And then, guess what? That opens the door. She's using that as electoral tool, as a campaign weapon to whip fear and, and racism and paranoia. One of her coalition partners is Salvini. They both actually endorsed uh, torture. They both endorsed um, sinking rescue ship in the Mediterranean Sea. They both, Salvini's own party produced a candidate, Luca Traini, who became a terrorist and went in a shooting spree and he shot people who look like me and you, people of color. So what we're seeing that this rhetoric is becoming violence and is being used to radicalize white people who are willing to kill and die. What happened on January 6th is not an aberration. What happens in Italy with these hate crimes are not an aberration. They are the extension of this strategy that make people so radicalized against democracy and against people of color and against minorities. They just elected in the Italian Senate, the president of the Senate is a notorious fascist. He was complaining yesterday when the portrait of Mussolini, a picture of Mussolini, was, was hanged on a wall of the minister of econ the economy in Italy. It was immediately taken out. It was immediately removed. He was complaining, saying, oh, that's cancel culture. How dare you cancel our heritage? Mussolini! Mussolini, he goes on to saying we're all the heirs of Mussolini. Fascism is not anymore uh, an idea that lived on the fringes. Fascism is in government. Fascism is on the rise. And fascists want to take over democracies. It's not a coincidence they all support Putin. And, yep. their and his genocidal and, war. And, and, Putin, it's and, not Putin, a and Putin is about white nationalism. He exactly. is about and white being, nationalism. So when you see Trump and CPAC yeah. and these Republicans saying, oh, if we take power, we're going to stop funding Ukraine uh, against uh, against Putin. They Putin is about white nationalism. Precisely. And that's not a coincidence that all of these guys are allies. That's why the fight I call this is a fight for the soul of democracies, not one democracy. And there's a huge coalition of these ethno nationalists, fascists, let me explain it clearly, fascists who want to destroy democracy here at home and overseas. That's why they are willing to support Putin and all of his cronies around the world. Yep. And, and the thing that I fear the most, that most people are underestimating the threat. Most people don't realize because they think, oh, Italy is far away or this. It's not. These ideas are becoming global. Yep. And these alliances are becoming even more obvious and more visible. They are aiding and abetting each other. The first appointment for Giorgia Meloni, the newly elected prime minister of Italy, and Donald Trump will be at the neo-fascist party in Spain that is called Vox. That is the first appointment together together where they will speak as a crowd of Spanish fascists about what? About their coalition and how they're supporting each other. After January 6th, Giorgio Meloni looked at the destruction, looked at the death and the violence that was unleashed by Trump and his allies. And instead of distancing herself from him, she said, no, I prefer him to Biden. I prefer him. She's telling us who she is. And when people tell you who they are, listen to them. Questions, uh, Joe, you're first. Your question for Rula. How do we get to the good people? And, and by that, I mean, you know, there are people that are um, well-intentioned, regular everyday people, but they are absolutely driven by fear, right? And what, what has happened is 
We fear what's not familiar to us. And there are so many yeah. people in this world that are scared to death of being overrun by people that don't look like them or people that don't link, think like them, or at least they're being told that they are. So how are how do we get to those people, particularly when from government to government, there are some things that in America we take for granted, which frankly are in jeopardy as well from a democracy standpoint. But there's other regimes that are more repressive now and already. So how do we get to and influence the good people uh, to allow them uh, space to breathe and to understand truth in a way that can keep us going in the right direction? That's a great question. And it, it takes me back to what Hannah Arendt, the best scholar of authoritarianism, when she said, the difference between well, who are the perfect subject of these autocrats, of fascists, basically, the people who cannot distinguish between truth and falsehood, between fictions and, and, and basically truth. And I think we need to tell people the truth. We need to talk to them. We need to engage with them. We need to invest more and more in educating them. Because the truth is most of these people, once you explain to them the facts, they're reasonable people, they're thoughtful people. And it's not a coincidence that Donald Trump said, oh, my favorite people are the least you know, educated and not educated because he is preying on their fear. Fascism is all about on preying on people's fear and prejudice. So if you, how do you dismantle that? You dismantle their fear and prejudice by appealing to their common sense, by actually explaining to them and doing what we're doing now, continue the conversation on every platform, yep. continue pushing this uh, and, and, and educating people about what really fascism did to them. Many people in Italy think Mussolini was really not that bad, that he built nice buildings, that he was actually, he brought law and order, that he brought prosperity. It's all a lie. He brought destruction, death, uh, genocide. He murdered his own people. He deported people. He unleashed all kinds of thugs and destroyed democracy. But you know what? When they start playing with what we need to read, history books, when they steer banning certain books, when they start basically interfering in the educational programs, you know what they are trying to do. They're trying not only to, white, to whitewash their crimes of the past, they're trying to control the future. And we cannot allow to do them, to let them do that. So I, I'm actually pleading with all of you to continue contacting all of our colleagues on major news networks, continue doing these conversations on every platform, because this is the last weapon we have to continue creating awareness about the big, the big threats, what they are doing, their crimes. It's not a coincidence that all of these forces supported the Iraq war and, so, and basically led to the destruction of the economy in 2018, in 2008. So you have major crises. Right. Then you have the handling of the pandemic. All of these crises were basically... Uh, had had who had who were in charge of these and who caused all these crises? These are these forces, whether it's, it's the Republicans here or the fascists in Europe, and now they are blaming all of us for their actions. They're blaming us for the destabilization of the Middle East, blaming us for the destroy destroying the economy after they did what they did in 2008. They're blaming us for the handling of the economy and the inflation. After And they won't take responsibility. So they're pivoting to identity politics. We need to, ex to ex explicitly call them out. Well, and that's precisely why they uh, fake news. You attack the media because if you discredit media, people say, oh, I can't believe you, even when it's true. Uh, Monique, go. Question, Monique, then Robert. No, I, I, I guess I was just wondering with respect to the particular comments about um, the jungle of the rest of the world, I, I, yeah. I, I have to admit, when I first listened to it, seeing it on its face, I, I kind of understood it in that I believe that some of what we see happening in the United States um, with police violence against civilians, with over-incarceration, um, with, with lawlessness, um, with insurrections is um, barbaric. And, and I just wondered whether, whether you disagree with that as compared to the, where, the, the way that things are in other places that also consider themselves to be democracies and, and civilized, um, or if it's the fact that the particular phrase he used 
was offensive or just from the person because you know the history. Rilla? So what he was saying precisely, and I, and I want to quote him directly, he said, Europe is a, a garden and the outside world is a jungle that wants to invade us. Okay, so I'm, I'm not, and, and if you think this is a chief, uh, this is top diplomat, this is Europe's top diplomat that's supposed to be diplomatic in his statement. Uh, he's of a certain age, but I lived in Europe for a long time. The way they depict people who look like you and me, Monique, they call us animals. They call us monkeys in parliament, in Italian parliament, the only woman of color that's ever been elected was called monkey, orangutan, in parliament by another minister. I was called on national television by the same guy who's part of the far right government, by the same guy, his name is Calderoli. He said, I refuse, I don't know what's her name, this woman. I refuse to answer her name, to answer her questions because she is, and he used the N-word on national television. The, there is racism in America, but you cannot compare it to racism in Europe. The racism in Europe is brazen, blatant, and widespread, ex, wide, widespread and normalized. I was the only woman of color appearing and still appearing on Italian television. The amount of racist attacks, xenophobic attacks, misogynistic attacks, under my house, under my house, and one of the reasons why I moved to America, under my house, my child and I would go to school and would read this writing, Italy is for white people. That was not 30 years ago. That was just a few years back. The amount of hatred towards people of color in Europe is astonishing. In France, recently, the French government decided to give back to the Algerian government basically the bones of people, Algerian people, who are beheaded by the French government. They gave back the skulls recently. Think of that. Just recently, they gave back the bones, the remains of these people who fought France during the era of colonialism. They beheaded them. They brought back the bones and took them back home with them. And recently, they gave them back. People in Europe, especially minorities, who are European, who are of color, considered not only is a threat, we're dehumanized on daily basis. We're not only dehumanized. Last week, the main newspaper put my, my picture on, and that newspaper belonged to Berlusconi, coalition partner of this woman who just won the election. He's in government with her. They called me Islamist, de facto calling me a terrorist. They called me a Taliban. They called me, they said, Intifada, Me Too, like making all kind of misogynistic reference as well. But above all for them, I am always called the N-word. Because but, for but, them, but, 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 I am did, did not black even woman, human. Rula, didn't the black woman just quit the national team? And because they've been saying she's Italian. Thank you. And they've been saying, Thank oh, you. she's not a real Italian. She's black. She she's is black. the most... She is the most famous athlete. She won all kind of awards. She was in tears crying, quit the national. Her name is Paola Agno. Her father is Nigerian and, his, and she is Italian, full Italian. In tears she quit because they called her the N-word after she won for Italy under Italian flag. She won for them. She quit the team. They, they called her the N-word and said, why are you even Italian? How come you're even Italian? She was born in Italy. She is, she played for the team for a long time. She, I mean, I talked to her agent and they were telling me this woman is only 20 years old. She said she cannot take it anymore. She's, she's on the brink of being broken as a human being. And we also because the kind of vicious yep. attacks against especially women of color yep. is more vicious than ever. And believe me, nobody... Few people expressed solidarity with her. And in the media, it was like a small story. The biggest story is what Berlusconi is doing with others. The people who expressed solidarity with her are the people actually, like the former prime minister Draghi and others, right. and expressed solidarity with her. And they called out those people who talk on those 
you know, in those terms and words, but they never talked about or call out the politicians that for years demonize and criminalize people of color like Meloni and Salvini and Berlusconi. Well, and, and look, of course, how the soccer players uh, are attacked uh, b b because of their race. Robert, uh, real quick uh, question, rule a real quick answer, and they got to go to break. Robert, go. Uh, absolutely. We've seen the rise of these far-right movements. Um, when Liz Truss entered office in uh, uh, Great Britain, uh, they called her cabinet a coconut cabinet. We've seen the rise of uh, Lukashenko in uh, Belarus. We've seen uh, Viktor Orban in uh, Hungary, who's become a hero of the right-wing movements here in the United States. Yeah. And this very much reminds me of the 14 points of Woodrow Wilson when he talked about ethno-nationalism being one of the leading contributing factors to war. Uh, what will it take to bring Europe back from this uh, pre-World War <laughs> footing that they seem to be on? Especially given the, uh, given the fact that now um, these same uh, majority white nations that are uh, slowly dying out and facing ethnic change are all the nations that also have nuclear weapons. What is the danger to the world of them losing power and not being able to accept the demographic changes that exist? I think we've never been. I mean, uh, and I, I don't want to be hyperbole. I, I predict the Trump victory because I watch what happened with Brexit. But also we live in a world where millions of people, if not billions, believe in alternative realities, believe in these big lies. These big lies open the door for Brexit. These big lies open the door for Trump to get elected. And these big lies, and who is using the manipulation of disinformation and weaponizing disinformation and propaganda? Basically, Russia for a long time and all of these autocrats. So I think the more we push and, and the more we push against this narrative and we call out those people fiercely. I mean, I, I watch the debates in these nights between Republicans and Democrats, and I love how people are start to pushing back aggressively with a message. I mean, when, when, when the chief diplomat of Europe said this, terrible remarks and and few people really called him out except journalists and minorities because the fight is left to minorities at this point but you know what when minorities are the only ones fighting for themselves it's over that means they can never win so we need to to create a larger bridge a bridge with all the progressives american progressive european progressives we need actually together to build the wall of protection mm. but also to call out all of these abusers whether they are our allies or they are our enemies. Because if you believe in, if you really believe in human rights, democracy and dignity for all, you cannot give a pass to people because they're your allies, the Saudis or others. You need to be consistent. Well, trust me, folks, um, if y'all don't understand what's happening in Europe and the parallels what's happening in the United States, this is all driven by white fear. This is about demographic shifts. It is about power. It is, that's what this is all about. And so we better understand that and realize how white nationalists in America are aligning with white nationalists in Europe and other parts of the world because they do not want to, even though the world is two thirds people of color, we know who controls the power and the resources. Rula, uh, keep staying on the front line. We appreciate you. your great work. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, back to our whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Welcome to Atlanta, one of the most expensive housing markets in America. But rather than help out, Brian Kemp cashed in. He made hundreds of thousands of dollars in real estate. His net worth skyrocketed. And while Atlantans struggled to stay in their homes, Kemp gave $10,000 tax handouts to the richest Georgians and a nearly $700 million no-bid contract to his campaign donor. Brian kicked back Kemp, making Georgia work for him, not you. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. A real uh, revolutionary right now. Black Power. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Rollins. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black Owned Media and something like CNN. You can't be Black Owned Media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?